Okay, in today's video, we're going to go over another problem involving free fall kinematics. And in this video, we're going to determine the total time an object will be in the air when it's launched or projected straight up with a known initial velocity. And in this case, the initial velocity is going to be 15 meters per second. Okay, so the problem says an object is thrown straight up. And I just drew a ball here or a round object. doesn't matter what it is, straight up in the air with initial velocity of 15 meters per second. And for how long will the object be in the air? All right, so what happens is we're going to project this object straight up with initial velocity, positive 15 meters per second, positive in the up direction. And it's going to go up, it's going to stop, and then it's going to come straight back down like that. Okay, and we want to know what is the total time for the up and the down that the object is going to be in the air. Now, we're only given a little bit of information here kind of explicitly in the problem. One thing we're told is that the initial velocity is 15 meters per second, and we want to know the time. Okay, so what I like to do is, which I think you should do, is write down all five of the variables that are in the kinematic equation. That's the initial velocity, the final velocity, the change in position, the acceleration, the time. Let's write down what we know and what we don't know, what we're looking for. Well, we know the initial velocity is 15 meters per second. Now, because it's a free fall problem, and we have acceleration due to gravity in the free fall problems, we know that the acceleration is minus 9.81 meters per second squared. We're asked to find the time we're not given the change in position. We're not going to use that. But the question now is, what is the final velocity? This problem can be done two different ways, and I'm going to do both of those ways in this video. And therefore, we're going to need two different final velocities. There's kind of two ways you can think about this problem. We, of course, want to know the total time, up and down. Now, in the first case, we're just going to consider the time it takes to go up. And if we can calculate the time it takes to go up, we know the time it takes to come down or back down. It's going to be the same. So if we know the time it takes to go up, then we can multiply that by 2 and we'll have the total amount of time. In that first case, we're just going to consider the path from here up to the top. And in that case, the final velocity will be 0 meters per second because before the object starts to come back down, it actually stops. So in that case, we're going to consider the final velocity to be 0 meters per second. Now, in the second case, for the other final velocity, so to speak, you can think of this problem has two final velocities, one when it gets here and one when it actually comes back down here. When it comes back down here, at the same place from which it was projected, it's going to have the same speed, 15 meters per second, but of course, it'll be traveling in the opposite direction, so it'll have a negative velocity, negative 15 meters per second. When we launch it, it's positive, so it's moving in the positive direction. When it comes back down, it's moving in the negative direction, so it's negative 15 meters per second. The speed is the same, and the time it takes to go up and the time it takes to come back down are the same. So for the second case, which we'll do both cases, we're going to say that the final velocity is 15 meters per second, or excuse me, or minus 15 meters per second. Okay, so once again, as with all of our kinematic problems, you're given three variables, you're asked to find a fourth, so now we're going to take all of our information, get out our kinematic equations, and figure out which is the right equation. Now, we're looking for the time. The equation we're going to choose has to, at a minimum, have the time in it. This equation does not, so we know this is not the right equation. Now, all of the other equations, this one, this one, this one, the other three have the time in it. In order to use the equation, it, we also have to know the other three variables that are in the equation. So for example, this first equation, we know the time. So we could use this. But the question is, do we know the final velocity? Well, yes, we know the final velocity. Do we know the initial velocity? Yes, we know the initial velocity. Do we know the change in position? No, we don't. So we can't use this equation because we don't know one of the other variables. And you'll notice this equation has the time and also has a change in position, so we cannot use this equation. So this equation has the time. We know the acceleration, we know the initial velocity, we know the final velocity. So this is the equation we're going to use. Okay, so now I'm going to take this to the next page. And so we have all our information up here, our diagram, and we have our equation. Now I told you we're going to do this two different ways. In the first case, and then we're going to use the same equation, this same equation for both cases. In the first case, the initial, excuse me, the final velocity will be zero. The initial velocity and the acceleration are the same in both cases. But in one case, we'll have a zero for final and then minus 15 meters per second for final. In the first case, if the final velocity is zero, 
then this term, final velocity, goes to zero. Now I'm going to solve the rest of this equation for time, which means I'm going to subtract, okay, I'm going to subtract the initial velocity from both sides and divide by a. That's going to give me that the time is equal to the initial velocity or minus the initial velocity divided by a. All right, now I can simply plug my values in because I know my initial velocity and I know a. Well, the initial velocity is 15, so in this case it's going to be minus 15 because it's minus the initial velocity divided by a, which is the acceleration minus 9.81 meters per second. See if a minus and a minus is good because we have a positive for the answer and time has to be positive. Simply divide 15 by 9.81 and you get that the time for the object to go from here to here is 1.53 seconds. Well, we want to know the total time up and down. The time up and the time down are the same. Multiply this by 2. You get the total time is 3.06 seconds. Okay, so that's the first case. Let's go back to the beginning. And in the second case, the final velocity is not 0. The final velocity is minus 15 meters per second. Well, the same initial and the same acceleration. So now... We have the time, we're going to do the same thing, subtract the initial velocity from both sides. That gives us final velocity minus initial velocity, divided by the acceleration again. That means the time is equal to minus 15, because the final velocity is 15, minus 15. The initial velocity is 15, but it's minus 15, divided by the acceleration, which is minus 9.81. That gives us the time is equal to minus 30. Minus 15, minus 15 is minus 30, divided by minus 9.81. And you end up with the exact same time, 3.06 seconds. So it doesn't matter. You can think about it either way. A lot of times I think people use this way and multiply by 2. That's the time, 3.06 seconds. If you project any object straight up into the air and it comes straight back down, this is the total amount of time for which it will be in the air. Okay, so thank you very much for watching. I hope you found that helpful. If you did, please do all of the following three things. Give me a nice thumbs up for this video. Leave me a nice positive comment in the comment section. Then subscribe to my channel. Get all my excellent chemistry, physics, and math videos. Thank you very much. We'll see you in the next video.